have been training as a management consultants to identify a problem, try to solve the problem, and give a value to the solution that you provide. Uh, we have four teams uh, on Sony, BBQ Chicken, Xiaomi, Kakope consulting team. And we have uh, panels invited from outside who has never seen your presentation before. So they'll be assessing from a fresh, fresh eyes. They'll be assuming the role of executives of each company. Also, I've asked team leaders to pick and choose two individuals from each team who will also take the uh, role of the uh, panel. And you will cross mark your own team, because you're not going to be assessing your own team. We're assessing three other teams. Uh, show me your hands who's the panel for each team, in each, each team. Show me your hands. One, two, we have. And here, we have two, we have two. We have two. Great. All right. Sounds good. Um, after each team presents, everyone in your team must come forward and be ready for Q&A. Okay? We'll be also looking at how the teamwork is uh, orchestrated, whether just one person answers the uh, question or people take turns in answering the question. So there is a teamwork in the uh, and team collaboration in your project uh, summation. Okay, any other questions so far? Good. I'm going to be introducing five panels from outside, and um, they were going to give you a little a brief background, and we're going to give them big hands. We're going to start with Mr. Marshall Mabo. My name is Marshall. I'm from Ivory Coast. Now I'm studying media communication at Hanyang University. I learned Korean for, for one year in Daegu at Kemyang University. Thank you. Hi, hello everyone. Hi. Hello. I'm Jordan, I come from France, and I'm doing here a double master degree in business administration. So I'm almost the same age like you. I will be nice, honestly, <laughs> because I know what it is to do presentation like this and so on, so I will be nice, and I, hope, I just hope you, did, uh, you will do well. Good luck. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jisoo, and I am the leader of Team Black, and here is my teammate, Sung Hoon. And today, I would like to talk about BBQ, but before I get to my presentation, there is a little story I would like to tell you. Well, does anybody know the company Nokia here? Yes. Hands up, please, if you're very good. So, this Nokia, they used to be the number one in its industry, but do you know where they are actually right now? Right, nobody has a clue, right? Me neither. So that happens to companies. And BBQ actually recently, they were the first, but now they kind of went to the second, and it could get worse. So today, I would like to present you some ways that BBQ can make this crisis into a chance. Chicken, yum. Okay, the context. Today I would like to talk about the first problem, the first solution, and then my fellow teammate will talk about the second problem and the second solution. So, 
First problem, uh, recently BBQ was held in question for its attitude towards public and its own people. Well, the attitude I'm talking about right now is being arrogant and bossy. Uh, to, to be more specific, uh, first of all, BBQ well, helped, well, pushed the responsibility of a burden to the sub-franchises, which were the sales promotion costs or expenses. Well, these expenses are usually the expenses of the headquarters, not the sub-franchises, but they put the burden on the sub-franchises. And second, they laid off an intern very unfairly with unfair reasons. And third, they went bossy on a small merchant for copying the logo of BBQ. This one right here, but to be honest, it really didn't look alike. So these problems could actually harm the reputation of BBQ. And harming the reputation shows right here. In 2014, BBQ used to be the first in its industry, in the franchise, and now, as you can see, they are listed at the second. And this could actually lead to loss of market share, and which could lead to the loss of profit as well. To be more specific about BBQ's current status, uh, there's something I've got to tell you. First of all, it costs ridiculously much more to open a BBQ's franchise than any other franchises in the industry. As you can see, it costs 220 million won to open up a BBQ, while Kyochon, Nene, Gumne, it only costs 50 million. So even if you add up all of these three, just can't make 220 million, can you? And second, closure percentage. Even if you do open up a BBQ franchise, 10%, actually more than 10% closes which means they go out of business, while 2.42, 1.89, So no wonder why BBQ is losing its reputation or popularity. So the solution we came up with today is called empathy marketing. Empathy marketing is a strategy of marketing that is about giving positive image to the public from doing some charitable businesses. By charitable business, I mean donation, fundraiser, and campaigns. Well, first of all, donation is very simple. You donate a certain amount of profit to the public or for the unfortunates. Well, this is a very short-term thing, so I would like to recommend you a long-term thing, which is a fundraiser and campaign. I would like to tell you that you should help hold a fundraiser or campaign annually to make uh, your company become a better company and thought as a good company to the customers. So there are some examples who actually had <coughs> success from this empathy marketing. They are KFCs, McDonald's, Tom Shoes, and I'm sure this could lead to BBQ being a good company. What we're expecting from empathy marketing is quite simple. It's improving the image of BBQ, and second, we want BBQ to come back to the first place in the market share, since that's where it belongs. And lastly, we want the customers to think BBQ as a good company, and whenever they're ordering a chicken from BBQ, I want them to think, Wow, I'm doing something good for the world. I'm, ha I'm actually helping the world become a better place. So, right, that was it for my presentation. Now I'm gonna hand it over to my fellow teammate right here, introducing Mr. Handsome. Good evening, I'm Seung of Team Labs, and Chisu suggested a nice solution on the first problem. How was it? I think it was very attractive. I think it was very attractive. Yes. But your company still has one more problem, and now I'm going to show you the next problem with an awesome solution. Let's take a look at the slide. As you can see in the slide, the competition of chicken franchise is too fierce. Nevertheless, now at this point, the number of chicken franchise continues to grow. In other words, Chicken market is very saturated, it means full. Very saturated, so there will be endless zero-sum game on the market share. 
But BBQ is actually not active enough in preparing the future, future despite the fact that you are not the number one anymore. So BBQ needs a breakthrough. So we suggest you to expand into the blue ocean. It is super potential 3D printer. If you use 3D printer for chicken business, you can get special differentiation among the competitors. However, not everyone may believe that 3D printers are, are looking forward to be commercialization. But as you can see, in Taiwan, food 3D printers are planned to be released at this year at the price of 700,000 won in Korean. Also, 3D printer, the demand of 3D printer are growing so fast that everyone in Korea, in Korea will have 3D printing in their home at least in 20 years. And why 3D printing chicken? 3D chicken, 3D printing chicken will be popular not only because it is special, but also it can be customized easily. For example, we can make the menu for vegetarians and athletes. Because 3D printer do jellification and solidification, you can make the chicken with other ingredients. So people do not have to worry about the concept that chicken is unhealthy food. So all the people can be your customer. How do you think about that kind of I really think it's a great option. I could imagine uh, children who are vegetarians. Yeah. So now She's actually vegetarian. Oh. Yeah. So now that you have it, I will totally want to be with you. That's exactly what I expect. <laughs> <laughs> and we can serve 3D printing chicken wherever 3D printer is accessible. It not only means we can serve 3D printing chicken to different continents, but also to isolated places or suburbs. At that time, all BBQ had to do is just sending the recipe itself and nothing else. Alas, I'm going to show you the results of our solution. At first, we can get, you, don't, you can lessen your burden to prepare the future because you can get super differentiation with 3D printer. And second, you can have more customers by providing various choices, <coughs> which is related to sales increase. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've now finished presenting the analysis, and uh, let me tell you something. Uh, there was a time when other countries left when Korea jumped into shipbuilding industry. They, people treated Korea as a job, but look now. We are now the number one in shipbuilding industry. Some people might think 3D printed chicken business is a joke. But please remember, you might be looking at the next number one. Thanks for listening and hope you like it. Good evening, we are first part of the Xiaomi team. He is Kyung Jun and my name is Hizi. <laughs> From the movie Searching for Happiness, money is a medium that separates people and a separate family and lovers, make people breathe the law and make, the, make them lose one pride. So, money is an obstacle to happiness. But every company's purpose is to make profit. However, we want to make Xiaomi to contribute to the higher world. Make our family happy on top of making profit. So, how we should how we have to do achieve this goal. Um, using smart device and smart module, we will make Xiaomi smartphone era, and in the end, we will make 
every family happy in Xiaomi smart home world. So we will talk about Xiaomi's status and direction Xiaomi should take in smart home market. This graph is world smartphone market share. Xiaomi has currently 5.2% market share. Compared to Samsung or Apple, it has very low figure. However, compared to the first quarter, Xiaomi has great market share rise. And this is world smartphone using rate of uh, world smartphone using rate. And in this graph, low price smartphones market share is increasing. So we think this trend is expected to continue. And Xiaomi will be able to use this trend. This is major smartphone price. As you can see, this is Xiaomi's product. Xiaomi's product price. Compared to Samsung or Apple, it has less than a health price. And if you suppose that Xiaomi's product has very poor, very poor performance, it has such a, such a low price. You can think like this. But if you think like this, you are making a mistake. This is, worth, this is the evaluation of World Street Journal. IT columnist Jeffrey Fowler, Jeffrey Fowler valued on Xiaomi's product. He valued Xiaomi's Mi Note as first stars. That is higher than Samsung's Galaxy Note 4 that got three stars. So we think Xiaomi will be able to actualize low price premium. By focusing on online sales, reducing the cost of expanding distribution network, and strengthening uh, and investing in strengthening software ability. And in the future, low end destruction strategy is what Xiaomi could take. This is the strategy. If the existing product uh, if the existing product quality overwhelms normal consumer expectation level, then the company can weigh the market by releasing lower and cheaper prices, cheaper price products. And Hyundai and Toyota already have succeeded by using this strategy. Hyundai wants to low price car targeting low income consumers, and they display 10-year, 100,000 mile warranty. And they succeeded in low-income consumers market. And Toyota also successfully penetrated to a high-class market by launching Lexus. Lexus was based on low-income consumers. But they, <coughs> but they successfully penetrated to a high-class consumer. So applying this tactic to Xiaomi, Xiaomi will be able to dominate position, uh, dominate good position in smart market. In case of smartphone and OS, launching low. In case of smartphone and OS, Xiaomi will be able to dominate good, good market, launching at low price. But even though it has some quality defect at first, but we think that Xiaomi can make people's trust and loyalty toward Xiaomi get higher by frequently applying consumers' opinion. And Xiaomi will be able to get a slogan 30 months is non-flow warranty. So we think make consumers' loyalty and trust toward Xiaomi get higher. From now, Gyeongju will present about smart home and smart module. My name is Kyung Jun, and let's start. Uh, imagine a future, uh, a house of the future. I guess every one of you have different image of it. I'll show you a, a house of future that Xiaomi makes smart home. Let's see a family 
who lives in smart home. First, for that, who has hiking appointment tomorrow? Mounting clothes will be placed at the front of the closet, like this. And tomorrow's weather forecast, forecast and hiking trail will be printed out in the study. And for mom, who prepared lunch box for dad, who just input a receipt in her smartphone and later bring the delivered food in the way home. Like this. And for son, who exercise in the hot weather, the air conditioner and air purifier will be turned on automatically, and a glass of water will be prepared in advance. And lastly, a daughter who loves music, the music that she prefers will be turned on in her room. All of these are done by Smart Module. Smart Module is a Xiaomi product that links home appliance to smartphone in a USB form. Uh, you might think that the Smart Module is only is only be developed in Xiaomi, and it takes a too long time to see it in real life, but that's not true. In fact, the smart home market is growing rapidly. There are five industries in smart home market. First is smart convergency appliances and home, apply home automation and smart home security and smart green home, and last, smart TV and home entertainment. Especially smart convergency appliances and smart TV industries are growing rapidly, uh, are expected to grow remarkably, like this, about two times and uh, four times and two times to 2014 to 2018. And also, you can ask whether Xiaomi can have a technology that supports this smart module plan. I say yes. So, Xiaomi already show specific technology that that leading technology me home and smart home set by of the internet of things. Considering considering Chinese smart home market will take on one fourth of the world market, the smart module plan will be effective solution. All of these products show Xiaomi is humble and open mind culture. But it also makes Xiaomi have fake Apple image. But Xiaomi focusing on not on uh, focusing on not only communicating with the customer, but also communicating with their life. Xiaomi <coughs> can escape the fake Apple image and also be a number one company that devotes for customers' life, uh, customers' family's happiness. So. Let the Xiaomi work begin. Thank you.
everybody, we are Team Purple. My name is Max, this is Nico, and we are here today to present you the Sony Executives Our Ideas for Your Future. First, I would like to tell you a story about myself actually, because like 10 years ago, I was 11, and during that time I really wanted a PlayStation, a Sony PlayStation, and um, my parents didn't want to give me one. So, so in January, in, after Christmas, because the Christmas before I didn't get one, I told my parents I really, really want one. So the whole year, in that year, I was talking to them and begging them like every second day, please, 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 mom, please, can I have a PlayStation? <laughs> and then at the end, I actually got one and I was really, really happy. And but that was Sony a few years ago, like ten years ago. Sony was the bee's knees in technology. Every cool kid in school had a Sony phone, the Sony Ericsson Walkman phone. I don't know if you remember. Um, and also the PlayStation was a good console to have in the days and that was Sony back in the day like you obviously know as Sony executives they were the leader in the industry they launched new products no one was even talking about Apple phones in those days they didn't exist but it was Sony they were the trendsetters and they were the first movers in their market and if I may ask in the peer group back here guys who has a Sony smartphone today? Yeah, no one uh, so that has happened to Sony. Back in the day, this is a, these are news articles from like 10 years ago. It was all about Sony and innovation and being the first in the market to launch something. This, for example, Sony to launch the first ultra-thin OLED AMOLED TV. And that was Sony back then. So where did it go wrong? Obviously, Sony was hit by like every nearly other company in every country in the world, by the financial crisis in 2008. And it took amazingly four years for you to recover. And only in the last two years have you made a profit, and even that profit has been marginal. And if we take a closer look, it has been the operating income of the mobile product, the smart, the sound systems, and the devices, so the gadgets which like 10 years ago were the main income and the bees needs in technology are now your profit loss uh, operations and division. So we as a team have made out Sony's failures to be that they had no overview of the future, they missed trains and trends like the smartphone and also by that they lost their brand value and due to the financial problems they had a lack of investment which they are suffering under today. Now, Nico. Thank you very much. So, good evening, everybody. So, first, I would like to uh, show you the two mission statements that we have selected. We think that they are the most relevant that uh, Sony used. So, the first one, a company that inspires and fulfills your curiosity. So, we think that in its history, Sony was fulfilling the curiosity of its customer through product development <coughs> and product innovation. So, the solution that we are going to propose is directly this first one. And the second one, so it's uh, maybe the most interesting one, that everything we do is to move you emotionally. And uh, yes, actually we think that Sony could move emotionally again its client by creating a new world for them. But yeah, how to create this world? Actually, we have analyzed two promising trends in this industry, so the smartphone industry. And uh, actually the one that is maybe the, the most uh, uh, seen nowadays is the wearable devices, maybe you know the eye uh, watch or the Google glasses for example, that's a few examples of those devices and also the, the concentration of functionalities in only one single device. So we would like to surf on those trends and implement a new product. But yeah, maybe on the paper it sounds a bit uh, easy and obvious, but we need to come up with a nice way and a nice product to implement it. So what would be this product? we came up with this bracelet, which would be uh, so the wearable integration device. Why integration? I'm going to talk about it later. So basically, that's a bracelet using the Pico projection technology. So it just projects like a little screen on your skin, and you use it the same way as a normal smartphone. So with your fingers, and it has the same functionalities. And um, uh, then it also okay. There are some. Uh, as, uh, all the details, for example, it goes under the water. So, for example, if you're scuba diving in Honolulu, 
then you can also uh, check the messages of your, of your girlfriend or, or your wife or something like that. <laughs> so uh, that's another little detail. Um, and, but that's not all actually. Okay, that's a cool product, but there's also a lot, a lot of strategic advantages for Sony. So, for example, that would be also a remoter for the other devices that uh, Sony produces. So, what kind of devices I'm going to show it to you? It's like this uh, uh, future shop, okay, too fast for me. It's a healing screen, uh, this projector, this PlayStation, this camera, and uh, also this sound system. So, how would we connect and control them with the bracelet? That's quite easy, actually. With the bracelet, you can control the volume of the of this uh, sound system, for example, with the camera, as an example. For example, I would just put it on this table and uh, activate it from a, a far distance, so no need for a selfie stick anymore. And uh, as well, I could transfer the pictures directly on my bracelet, and so project them on my skin, so pretty cool. And uh, also for the saving screen that you've seen, you could uh, directly uh, set up the, the uh, proportion of, uh, of light that you want on your, on your roof. And so that would be uh, another idea. So yes, actually you might think, uh, okay, that's a cool product still, but uh, okay, what are the strategic advantages for Sony? Like, what is it bringing to the Sony Corporation as a group? And we are going to explain it to you. That's uh, actually this new technology, it's the cutting edge technology on the market, so that would give a lot of, uh, of brand, uh, that would reboost the brand image of Sony. First of all, and then it would link all the existing products of Sony. So on a corporate level strategy, you could say that all the business units of Sony would be linked and their, profit, their profitability as well. So for example, if a customer buys the, the bracelet, he might be more willing to buy the other devices of Sony. So that would uh, increase and even maybe skyrocket the, the profit of uh, the Sony uh, corporation as a whole. And so we think that this bracelet could be the, maybe the key to, uh, profit, to profitability in the company. So uh, I would like to show you now a little video, uh, just to show you that it is possible. They already invested a lot in this technology. They created the, the PICO projection technology as well. That's really their product. And uh, it could be existing in a few years. If it wants to work. Apparently not, but uh, we have it on the the screen as well. I'm here in Sony's booth at CES 2014. This is the uh, Space UX concept. It's a projector projecting down onto the tabletop here. It's in breakfast mode, so the idea is you can check out the morning news and you can actually do some post-it notes or even check your calendar. This is, a, you know, again, a touch-sensitive, very concept piece. The projector is right above me here, and it just projects right down onto the tabletop. But it shows you what Sony's thinking about with its Space UX concept. I'm David Katzmeyer from CNN. Um, you could touch it only by projecting the, the screen on the table with your shadow. Then you could be using the, the, the device as a normal smartphone. So, yes, I'm going to go to the next slide there. So just, if you can imagine this thing, then it can happen. That's what we wanted to show, and as a conclusion, I wanted just to tell you that to take back this show that the uh, old king really deserves, Sony is the old king for me, and like, uh, I just need a good weapon, a smart weapon, the bracelet, I think. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired today. I am Jiro Park from Team White, who took on consulting for KakaoPay. Um, KakaoPay is a mobile payment system uh, based on KakaoTalk Kakao Messenger platform. Kakao, uh, this, is this is considered a main business uh, among many others of Dam Kakao. Before we start, please look at this picture. In this picture, we can see, uh, we, we can see sunlight coming through a window. Um, this room likes to make us feel happy and comfortable, but um, this first this light like this uh, cannot exert a strong power. And then how about this laser light? Uh, if a light is focused at a single point, uh, the, the light can, the light even can burst dozens of balloons in a twinkle. 
Cacao uh, Pay are learning, Cacao Pay is learning many, many various events to induce, uh, induce, pay, induce first payments by as many people as possible. Uh, how, however, their marketing effect is so faint. Uh, it is not efficient enough to, not efficient enough to lead millions of people uh, from, from Cacao to, to Cacao Pay. So we uh, so we suggest so so we suggest Kakao Pay to induce first payments uh, by taking one by taking one big shot uh, with just one company. Uh, this uh, this this graph is showing trends and service constant trend. Uh, as you can see, the cosmetics lands in first and closing is closing is followed, but. Um, as as cosmetics business is focused on women, uh, it, it it may have some limitations. So we concluded that uh, affi affiliating with affiliating with a closing company is the most rational way. Then oh, and we choose the we choose Uniqlo as the partner. Uh, this graph shows customers pre customers preference among. Uh, among, among closing brands, as you can see, Uniqlo uh, Uniqlo is lacking overwhelmingly in overwhelmingly in the first place. Uh, 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 making a big event, making a big event to many people, making a big event with a, with a brand that many people like will successfully make make them use uh, make them use cacao pay or so. Uh, further, furthermore, we our team our team think there is more to more to in more to cacao pay's success than just inducing first payment. Um, we we would able we would be able to say cacao pay succeeded only when these first users keep keep their relationship with cacao pay continuously. So so we thought so we thought uh, so we suggest. Uh, as you, as you can see, Kakao Pay doesn't have many doesn't have many affiliates, uh, so-called um, member stores. So their reuse rate is a little bit low. So we so we urge Kakao Pay to expand their expand their members member stores uh, for their sustainable sustainable growth. And, and as a detailed solution, we we suggest Kakao Pay to make make a connection with Kakao to Plus Friend. Kakao to Plus Friend operates by sending advertisement message to Kakao Pay users. Kakao to users. Uh, in this, uh, it shows the it shows the advertisement advertisement uh, responding late of Kakao Pay compared with compared with the email. As you can see, Kakao Pay, uh, it has the open, open, late of, open late and purchase late of Kakao Pay is extre extremely higher than those of emails. Um, so, so we thought then how can, uh, so uh, in, in this picture you can see the strategy. Uh, in in existing market, uh, we in existing market, even if we buy buy something or get a sales information from from Kakao to Plus Kakao to Plus friend, uh, we sh we should visit the shop and put personal info and have to have to pay the coupon or other things. But if if we add a, if we the Kak the Plus Plus friend message. Plus, plus message plus added to added to Kakao Pay message. They can they don't have to visit real visit to real shop. Uh, some people can say some people can say like that it is, it is an inappropriate model because you know, we should we should see real we should see the actual item to in order to buy something. But we are we are already accustomed to virtual shopping, for example, online or home shopping. So we we doesn't think that's a big problem. 
let's let's visualize it on consumer side. Um, consumers consumers can, uh, for example, Uniqlo is a member of Kakao Plus brand, and many users many users get message from Uniqlo and many coupon. Uh, it, like this, we can add the Kakao Pay Kakao Pay payment button at the at the message, like this. Uh, to, to suppliers, to suppliers, uh, suppliers can sell their products by uh, through Kakao Pay uh, by paying by just just by paying plus plus friend affili affiliation fees. Um, they they can they can achieve cost cutting by uh, they cannot. I'm sorry. They they can cut they can. Achieve cost cutting uh, since ca since cacao will offer the since cacao cacao offer the free the free payment services to plus friend plus friend members. Uh, cacao pay uh, this this mo uh, this connection can make a virtuous cycle to expand 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 members to us. Uh, consumers can consumers can buy what they want anytime at anywhere, and as as I said before, as I said before, suppliers can can sell their product at little cost, and this can be uh, this can be advantage to Kakao Pay also. For uh, Kakao Pay, the CEO of Dam Kakao Isogo said that uh, they they will. They will increase their marketing cost from 40 billion dollars, 40 billion once to 80 billion once for cacao, a uh, cacao pay. Um, if if our strategies for concentration and connection are performed well, uh, they could this 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 huge cost one week wasted in vain. Um, cacao, uh, what what make a cacao so successful? Uh, we can put into one word premium. Cacao pay <coughs> uh, in, in existing mark in existing messaging market. Cacao Cacao provided a free Cacao provided a free mail, free chatting services. Uh, our our strategies are a little bit. Uh, our our suggestion is also one kind of a premium in respect in respect of a discount or cost cut. Uh, we we assure that Kakao Pay will succeed when when it contends for victory by their own Kakao Foods. We 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 wish the very best of Kakao Pay. Thank you for this. Okay, the uh, panels. Just uh, write your name, please. Be sure to write your name so we know whose the paper is from and add in all the numbers, but the calculation of the addition, you may leave it as it is or you may just finish it and give it to me. And the last point of uh, uh, 20 point in the uh, document is already given uh, point, so you don't have to touch it. Okay? And the, the panels from each team uh, also uh, complete the form and give it to me after the class so we can bring it forward to the entire uh, calculation of the assessment. Um, let's do a summary. Questions to you and, and then my comments. In the entire 15 weeks of this class, from the week one, this is week 15, uh, can you share with us uh, one word you've learned from entire class, entire discipline? Each, each one of you may have different perspective, different uh, ideas. Uh, I'm sure some of you may have improved a lot. Some of you have a little bit of improvement. Uh, regardless, what have you learned from this discipline of entire 15 weeks. Anyone, can we uh, share those uh, ideas and experiences? In global communications, in management consulting, in analyzing a company, market, users, and thinking about the strategies to make it better, what have you learned? If you can use one keyword and give a little explanation. Perseverance is a, uh, is a good word, at least for me, because in our case, I mean, we learn a lot of, uh, lot of uh, things, 
So it was just not uh, like applying them the first, probably the first time you get it wrong. So we tried a lot. Like every time we, we, we did a new presentation, um, personally for our team, it was like, okay, try again, try again, try again, try again, till we get like something that we wanted. So maybe it won't work at the first time, uh, just talking in public, being concrete, making a first uh, the, like speech or making the people there in public to really capture your like uh, message. But if you persevere, uh, I think uh, you can have on, like a good day. I agree. Uh, I'm asking a question to team leaders. I've noticed in many different versions of your team presentation, it has changed a lot. It has improved a lot. How did you, team leaders, uh, move your team members to create the improvement? I, I'm very curious as well. What did you do? What was the secret you guys had? Any, uh, any sharing? Please. Can you, can you stand up? No, uh, nothing I would say that like, it's just they, they took the responsibility for like that was like uh, they didn't need any order actually to self-organize in the team and like uh, I would say there was a, there were different uh, leaders emerging in the team like uh, uh -huh. yeah so and actually that was uh, I actually just like preserving the good mood was the right motto I guess because like even though there, there were like uh, different leaders uh, like uh, you know the person who are just like kind of um, accepting the order in the gentle manner, and that was a uh, really useful for working together. So that was your leader's style. I think it worked very well. Okay, okay good. Other teams, uh, what have you done to make the improvement over the course of time? Any other team? What was your uh, method? What was your leader's style? All four of you made a lot of improvement. Maybe uh, some people other than, uh, other than the leaders can, can comment about their own leader. That's also a possibility. How did you make the, improve, make the improvement over the course of time? Maybe Kutim? Maybe someone can say about uh, your own leader? What was, the, what was your methodology in you know, creating the improvement over the course of time every single week? What have you done? Yeah. How did you move the team? How did you move the team to make the improvement every single week? Can you stand up? A lot to increase efficiency of our team. Efficiency? Uh, How so? For example, the first time we just a little bit confused, so we did uh, many same things together because for one presentation, 15 people were too many for one presentation, so we did a lot of same things and it was lack of efficiency, but Chisu divided many sections, many sections like presentation, presentation, making presentation, and, and making a script or research like that, and so we made a masterpiece. We made a masterpiece in very short time. So we really improved in our increasing efficiency. He tried his best. I think so. Yeah. And all of our, all members of our team did best. I'm sure. It looked like it. Good. In case of uh, the Xiaomi consulting team, I've seen many creative ideas, not just once, but many, many times. Uh, what was the uh, uh, power behind those creativity? How did you do that? It was a difficult, uh, difficult uh, uh, client to deal with. And as the one of the panel uh, pointed out, you guys did an excellent analysis and the presentation. And I understand in the middle of the uh, course of this class, you weren't really sure what to do. And at the later uh, part of the class, you, you got the point. And there's got to be a, some way you got to that point. Can somebody share with us how, how you uh, come up with those ideas? Because in the middle of the entire process, you were a little lost. And at the last minute, you got the point. And how and, and what did you do? <laughs> he says something very important. Make things simple. Find a simple point that matters. Because um, every industry is all complicated, whether it's a payment industry, or chicken industry, what have you. 
things are complicated, and if you can find the simplest format of an issue, and you can pinpoint them, and there goes the solution that can follow those pain points. Let me write a few things so we can remind ourselves what to, uh, what to expect in the future. All right, a few things I want to share with you. Entire semester, all of you, all of you, uh, play the role of a management consultant, uh, taking the imagination of a maze baby uh, McKinsey type, where their job is to think critically, analyze a situation, find a problem, find a solution, present the value for the issue or the problem they may have. Well, it takes smartness, of course, it takes high IQ, high knowledge, but it is beyond those IQs and being smart, okay? Um, it's a discipline. Many, many times I've said, when you learn to drive, okay, you don't learn to drive just by reading a book. By reading a book, you learn a lot about cars and traffics and driving laws and everything. You can become theoretically very good at driving, but if you've never, never driven a car before, well, chances are uh, you can't drive a car, okay? Same thing with the corporate discipline. You can learn a lot about finances, marketing, management, about the companies and the markets and so on and so forth. You can read a lot and absorb a lot of knowledge, but if you actually haven't tried to tackle the problem and solve the problem, well, it's like a driving. You can never drive uh, just by theory. Uh, many of you said companies like Nokia, Sony, all those companies once were great, now they failed miserably. Why? Um, <laughs> companies have different viewpoints. I'm going to take, 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 uh, have you take a look at the uh, one on the right hand side, the viewpoints. A lot of companies, smart companies, a lot of money, high technology, great brand, a lot of user bases, they can't fail, they said but they were taking the perspective of the company more, more time so than the perspective of the user bases. Those companies who did not fail, who actually uh, made the incumbent like a fool and became the new king in the marketplace, they were always, always taking the perspective of the users, the customers, the consumers, the market. When those companies fall in the arrogancy of their own success. Oh, I am Samsung, oh, I am Nokia, oh, I am Sony. We've seen many, many, many times their success becomes the enemy of their future success. Actually, it became uh, the reason for their failure. Your job, when you graduate, you guys are students right now, in a year or two, three, I don't know, uh, you will graduate. You will go into the real world. Either you will work as a consultant, Maybe you'll work as the uh, uh, employee of uh, Sony or Samsung, or maybe you can work as an investor for those companies as well. Whatever role you may take, this experience you've done in this entire semester, I want, I hope, that it gives you the uh, breathing room to think from the perspective of the market, the consumers, the customers, the users. Not with just knowledge, not with just the smartness, but with what I wrote, heart. And a little bit of logic too. Remember the uh, beginning of this entire uh, class? People are moved by their heart, more so, more faster than their own thinking, their logic. When they look at the advertising, in three seconds, five seconds, they are moved of their heart and make a decision to either to buy or not buy, right? It is their heart that matters 
Of course, we all have brains and thinkings and logics, but they follow the heart, not the other around. Those companies who understand how to talk to the users, the customers, heart to heart, and then add in the logic of, you know, uh, when that makes sense, usually wins the market. But if they think they are, the, they are smarter than the consumers, smarter than the users, and they create the next products, their future, using only their logic and not bring their heart to the table, you know, chances are they may be talking to themselves, not, not talking with the customers. Communications, as we learned so far, is the communication between me and the rest of the world. Remember the uh, word we, we analyzed, communication? Come means what? C-O-M or C-U-M? Come. Come. Together. Uni means? One. And uh, eight or Kate? It's a function. It's a communications function of bringing me and the rest of the world together. If and only if companies understand how to communicate with the market, Nokia would never have failed. Sony would continue to be the king of the world and any other, countries, any other companies out there. Many smart people, men and women, when they go into the companies like Sony and Nokia or Samsung or whatever, they know they're smart. They use their logic and they prove their logic by becoming more smart, but are they actually communicating with the hearts, with the hearts of the consumers? Not many of them do that. So what I wrote, what I wrote logic, yes, you need to have it. Heart, you need to have it more. Maybe you want to have it, have heart first, and then add in logic. Bottom line, can you have your users, your customers, your market, fall in love with your company. Simply put, we have a beautiful woman, beautiful man here. Can you have the other person fall in love with you just because you're smart and you're logical? I don't think so, right? Men and women, every human being, they fall in love because their hearts are touched and moved, right? And can you force one another's heart to be touched and moved? Can you force them? No. It is voluntary. They are touched. They are moved. Not because someone else is smart or strong or powerful. Well, not just because they are handsome or beautiful. Because they are touching, really, the heart of each other. We know it by heart as a human being. But when you, human beings, go into an organization, Sony's and Nokia's and Samsung's and whatever, BBQ's and Kakao's. Can you, do you, are you really touching the heart of the consumers? Are you really making the consumers fall in love with you? We as individuals, we do that naturally. We understand how to fall in love or have the one you love fall in love with you. We understand it you know, naturally. When you actually go into a company setting, you kind of lose that. Why? Why? That was the uh, uh, challenge we've been tackling entire semester. Why do we lose the heart when we actually go into a corporate setting? Why do we become machines? Why do we become like function? Why do we become part of an entire big tool? We human beings. We sell. We make and sell goods to the human beings out there. Those consumers, those users, they are not machines, they are not robots, they are actual human beings out there. When they talk to them, using only the logic, your only smartness, your arrogance, the communication is only maybe 50%, maybe less. But if you talk to them human to human, as a company, not losing the human face of the company, and you communicate using that heart to heart um, mode, I'm sure your company, whatever company you may be working for, or investing in, or consulting uh, for, your companies can perform better. Because when you do not lose the face of a human being and the heart you have, users, they know right away. They know right away. The success and failure, being global or being just domestic, Kakao's being domestic, 
They can become global. Why aren't they becoming global? I, why don't you ask a question? Are they only touching the heart of Korean population? Can they not touch the heart of the entire global population? What have Google did, done, that they've done so well that they've done better than cacaos and neighbors and doms in Korea? Not because Koreans are not as smart as those global players. I don't think so. The smartness is there. Every company is smart. There is not a single company who are stupid to know their market. But intelligence is the second thing to worry about. Do you have what it takes to fall in love with your target audiences? We all talk to each other for the entire semester. Okay? If I only bragged about my intelligence, my smartness with you, and made you feel uh, you know, uh, prejudiced, less of a being, you may not like me. But I always try to take a position of respecting you, respecting your personality, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your future, your career. Everyone can improve from one to another step. Same thing. If you respect the market, if you respect the customer basis, the user basis, with a sincere heart, not just the brain power you have, they know, they feel it. Okay? Global communication is the theme of this entire uh, course. Communication may be a technique, may be a discipline. Driving, for example, is a technique, it's a discipline. Some of you drive well, some of you don't drive well. But when it comes to a critical moment, it's your heart that saves you from accidents. It's your heart that gives your uh, families and friends in the same car the happiness because you want to drive nice and comfortable, not just to prove that you are a fast driver. The point I'm trying to make, whether it's driving, whether it's business discipline, whether it's communication, uh, to be more specific, it's not just a technique or the discipline you want to have. They are the, uh, maybe the interim stage of what you're trying to get. It is, we really care about person sitting next to you when you drive. If you care about someone sitting next to you, maybe your girlfriend, maybe your friend, maybe your family, you will drive with care and lots of love because you don't want to get into an accident. If you drive a company as a CEO, as executives, you will drive your company with care because your employee is sitting next to you, your investor, your shareholder sitting next to you, your customers sitting next to you, if you care them, if you care for them, if you love them, you will drive with care. You will think how to make them comfortable. You will think, do they need water? Do they need more air? Do they need more, uh, more view, more music? I don't know. They will think to create the ambience, the atmosphere that's going to make them comfortable, happy, safe, and you know, feel so much loved. If and only if. The companies will do the same thing as if you drive a car with a full of people who you care about, friends and family and loved ones. If the companies can do that, the same thing, their companies would not go in, get into an accident called a failure. Those companies who are arrogant to stay in their success and never thought about, what do we do for my family members? Family being the employees, investors, the customers. If they Stop thinking about what I need to do for my loved ones. Well, the operation can stop any time. There's been a lot of proof in history. When you graduate, when you go into the real world out there, you take any position, any company, any role, remember this. Just like man and woman falling in love, just like friends to friend falling in love with each other as a friendship, same thing. Just like you have a, a love in your family, same thing. Care for their well-being. Care for their happiness. Okay? Show them the respect and really focus on what can I do to make him, make her, make them feel better. Those companies who constantly think about their customers, 
How do I make my customers happier? How do I make my customers fall in love with me? They would never fail. At least they have a chance to uh, move, move ahead of their competition than falling in behind. I have been practicing business for about 25 years. I've seen many companies uh, either succeed or to fail. The pattern I've noticed, long story short, was the word love. Those companies who do not have respect, who do not have uh, care for each other, they don't have love. They only have functionality to, to make money. But it is those companies who show care and respect and they result in showing love for one another. And those companies, people really love, really like. Okay? Uh, whatever company you go, you're gonna go work for, uh, and you could be an uh, entry-level person if you graduate and go into a company. Talk to your superiors, talk to your boss, talk to your company. Can we really care about our customers, our, our uh, ones that we have to take care of, instead of just um, uh, thinking about how to use them to create a functionality to create profits and money? People are not machine, and the companies these days are becoming more like a machine than a human being. If you remain as a human being, as a person, as a group of those individuals becoming a more of the human being atmosphere, culture, your companies can be loved because people do not like being loved. Who doesn't? Right? So my blessing to you, I love you all. I hope when you graduate, when you move on, you become more of the loving individual because of that spirit you have that culture you implant organizationally that will create a little seed to change your company and thus change the world. Those companies who really care and love, they win. I've witnessed it over and over and over again. I hope you will win in your future. Thank you very much.